So far, the way we've been developing our Flash Word example application is in a very rudimentary fashion, where we just have a few different files. We've got our index.html file that, of course, links into our JavaScript file and things like our CSS file. And when it comes to running it, we're just opening it directly in our browser and letting the browser uh, render the page, show us the results. All right, we can see that here. I've got my index.html file open. You can see the path to this. It starts with file, right? We're not seeing that typical uh, HTTP protocol that we see with websites. We're just loading a file. We've got a path to my computer. Very straightforward. This is often how we start to learn how to make websites is just, you know, create the file, open it in the browser. And this works, obviously, we've gotten this far, but now we wanna take things up a level and we want to integrate a build system into how we're developing our applications. Uh, and the reason we want to do this is, well, there's several different reasons and benefits we're going to get from a build system. Uh, and to go through these benefits, let me go over to the notes that accompany this video. I've got a bulleted list here that talks about some of the things we're going to get with a build system. And benefit number one is something called hot reloading or hot module replacement. What this is going to do is, first of all, we're going to run our sites over a local server. So instead of just opening files directly via our file system, it's actually going to run through a server. And that server is going to be listening for changes to our code files. So anytime we make a change to our code file, we save those changes, it's going to instantly reflect that change in the browser. So that's going to save us from that step of having to refresh the page and reload the entire application just to see our changes. All right, so obviously that's going to save us a lot of time when developing. The other nice thing about that is it's going to be able to maintain the state of our application, which is also going to help us streamline the development process. Because let's say, you know, the thing we are working on right now is the final message we see once we've answered all of the words. And just to simulate this, I'll go ahead and enter all the correct answers. All right, so let's say we're working on something right now and we want to be um, changing something about this final completion. The way we're running things now, we'd go back to our code files, we'd make some change, and then we'd come back here and we'd have to refresh the entire interface. And then to get back to that state or that point, we'd have to go through and enter all of the uh, correct answers again to get to that point to see if the changes we made worked as expected. Whereas with hot module reloading, it will reflect the changes and maintain the state. So we would just see the part we're focusing on up here updated without having to go through and recreate that state again. All right, so hot reloading, definitely gonna be a nice improvement in our development process. And it's one of those things that once you start working with it, you're gonna start to wonder how you ever developed without hot reloading in place. Uh, other benefits we're gonna see is once we have a build system in place, we can work with something called single file components. This is a important part of how we can start to organize our view applications as they grow in complexity. Uh, it's not something we've talked about yet because we need to build systems to work with single file components. So that's something that once we get our build system in place, we'll dig into single file components and you'll start to see why we use them. The next benefit we're going to see with our build system is we're going to be integrating package management into our projects. Uh, so this is going to make it really easy to pull in and mounted, uh, manage any outside dependencies that our project needs, including things like the view framework itself. So instead of loading it from an external CDN like we've been doing so far, we're actually going to be pulling the view framework into our project. Uh, and with package management beyond just view, any other outside dependencies that we might need to pull in, uh, we're going to be able to easily do that. Um, finally, here are some miscellaneous uh, benefits and things we can get with a build system when it comes to uh, processing our code files, um, just optimizing the development experience, optimizing the end product. There's all sorts of things that a build system provides. And we're not necessarily going to get into every specific detail I have listed here in this series. I think the takeaway I want you to have from this is just understanding that nowadays when we're building modern web applications, especially if we're dealing heavily with uh, advanced JavaScript interfaces, we need a lot of these features. We need a lot of these tooling, uh, this tooling and build system is gonna provide that for us. So with that, that's all the why. Why are we getting into build systems? Let's now get into the specifics, the how of it, starting with what tools we're gonna use. The first tool we need to talk about is our package management tool. We're gonna to be using NPM or Node Package Manager. Uh, this comes from the world of Node.js, which is the server-side implementation of JavaScript, but uh, is used heavily within just general JavaScript applications. 
Uh, it's not the only JavaScript uh, focused package management tool. Uh, there are others out there that you might want to explore, but it is the one we're going to be using in the series and it, it is quite common and popular. Once we have NPM set up, we'll use it to uh, interface with something called Veet. This is the build system we're going to be using. Um, and this is really what's going to give us access to all of these benefits that I've outlined here. All right, so knowing that, let's start off with Node Package Manager. Uh, this is something that many of you might already have installed on your computer just because it's a very uh, common tool used in the world of JavaScript. Uh, to see if you have it installed, just open up your command line program and just run the command npm. Uh, if you get a bunch of output about how to use it, it's already installed. Uh, if you get output that says command not found, it means it's not installed. And so you'll want to follow this link I have in the notes. This will take you to the download page where... Uh, you can see you've got an installer for Windows or Mac, so just go ahead and click that, download it, run the installer, it should get set up on your system. Uh, and then the only other thing you need to do, and this is specific to uh, Mac users, is after it's installed, you just need to update something called your computer's path variable so that when you invoke NPM from command line, your system's able to find it. Uh, if you've never worked with your computer's path variable, I have a separate guide on how to do that. It's pretty straightforward, so just go follow this guide. It'll take a few minutes to get that set up. But long story short, you want to take these two paths that we got with the installer, make sure they're in your computer's path variable so that when you're in command line and you invoke NPM, your system's able to find it. Uh, now, Windows users, you don't have to do this because as part of the installer, it actually updates your computer's path variable for you. So once you've gone through that installer, you should just be able to invoke NPM, no problem. Right, so now that you've got NPM installed, now we can turn our attention to Vite. And what we're going to do is we're going to use Vite to generate a new view project for us. And it's going to set us up with all of the features we need in our build system. Uh, and the way we're going to do this is via NPM. So we're going to run the command NPM create. We're going to reference Vite, and then we're going to tell it we want the, the latest version. So I'm going to copy this command, bring it over to my command line, and I'm currently in the directory where I've been putting all of the code I've been working with in this series. So this is a good place where I want to create this new project. Uh, in your case, just move to whatever directory you want to create your project, and then we can go ahead and paste that command. And it'll quickly run through an initial setup, and then it'll start to ask you some questions about the project you're going to set up starting with the name of it. Uh, and just to distinguish from the existing FlashWord project I've created, I'm gonna call this one FlashWord Beat. So I'll hit enter. Then it's gonna ask me for the framework I wanna use for this project. I'm gonna use the down arrow to select view. Uh, you can see though that there are other types of projects. If you're working with a different framework, you could choose that here, or you could just create like a, a plain vanilla JavaScript project using Vite. Uh, it has options for all of these, but of course, in our case, we want to use view. Uh, then we have the option of just plain view or view with TypeScript. Uh, TypeScript is something that I do recommend checking out. It provides a little bit more discipline to your applications in terms of uh, making sure you're being more specific with data typing. Uh, a little bit beyond the scope of this particular series, though, so we're just going to stick with regular view. All right, and that's it. It should have scaffolded the project for us. And then the instructions it gives us tells us to move into the directory that was just created, flash word Vite. And then we're going to run the command npm install. This is going to pull in all the outside dependencies we need for this project. And then finally, we will run npm run dev. This is what is going to actually set up the development web server in which we're going to run this project. So let's follow these instructions, starting with changing into the directory. Then we'll run npm install. And we'll give this a few moments to run. It's right now pulling in any of our outside dependencies, including, of course, Vue, as well as some other development tools that Vite is going to be using. Uh, and then to the extent that any of those dependencies have their own dependencies, it's going to pull that in as well. Uh, here you can see the final output on my end. Uh, you will often see a bunch of warnings, uh, and that's fine. You could ignore any warnings. Obviously, if we had any sort of errors, we would want to take a closer look at that. But looks like everything went smoothly on my end. So then let's follow that final step, which is to actually start up our development web server. We're going to do that with the command it gave us, which was npm run dev. All right, and then that should start our dev server, and then it gives us an address where we're actually going to access this project. So now we're going to be loading this project via HTTP instead of that file protocol we were dealing with previously. So we're actually running this over a web server. 
Uh, you can see it's running over port 3000 in my case. Uh, you might see a different port number here. If your computer was, say, already using port 3000, it might just find a, a different port to use. Long story short, just give uh, take whatever address it gives you, go ahead and copy it, and let's pull it up in our browsers. And perfect, that's what we want to see at this point. This is the default splash page you see with every new view application generated by Vite. Uh, and now that we've seen in the browser, let's take a quick look at the code files behind the scenes. So I'm going to go over to my code editor and I'm going to go ahead and open this up. So I'm uh, in the directory where I generated it. I'm looking for flash word Vite. And we can go ahead and let me just zoom in here. You can see there's several directories and files that it, it uh, scaffolds your project with, it set you up with. Uh, and one of the things it mentions in this splash page, it says edit components hello world view to test hot module replacement. Let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm gonna do, let me put the browser on the right side and on the left side, I'm gonna find that file it was talking about. So this is under source components hello world view. Right. This is uh, one of the file that's, uh, files that's dictating what we're seeing on the page. So let me pull this to the left. All right, so you can see here it says recommended IDE setup, and then it's got a link. That's what we're seeing over here. So watch what happens as I go through. Let's say I delete all of this content. Uh, I'm gonna delete everything until the end of the template. And I'm gonna save those changes in my code editor and notice how it instantly reflects in the browser. That's hot reloading in action. And I'll show that again. I'll just enter some content, save my changes, and we automatically see that there. So definitely one of the key benefits that we get with this build system and something I wanted to highlight right away. Uh, beyond that though, uh, there's a lot of other things we should talk about with this new Veet scaffold project, uh, starting with things like, you know, what is this .view file? Why are we having JavaScript and HTML and CSS all mixed into the same file? That seems a little weird. Um, all of these other files and directories in here, what is the purpose of them? How is this application actually working? This is all ground that we still have to cover. And I'll actually dig into that in the next part of this series. This part was really just about getting things set up, getting it to this point. Uh, so that's where I'm gonna wrap up this video, uh, except for there's one last thing I wanna talk about, which is just how the way that we're accessing our project via this local server is only gonna work as long as it's still actively running in command line, right? So coming back to my command line program, you could see that I ran that npm run dev command and it's still just actively running, making the server available. Uh, we could also see output here. Every time I made a change to my file, you could see that hot module reloading was triggered. We see that logged here, All right? So as long as this is running, I can preview my work in the browser. But if I were to stop this, and the way I'll do that is I'll use the keyboard shortcut uh, control C. All right, now that server is no longer running. So if I go back to the browser and try to load this, I can't load my project anymore. All right, so at this point, uh, let's say, you know, I had walked away from the project, I had stopped the server, but it's, you know, a day later and I want to work on it again, I would just come back into the project and run npm run dev, restart that server, just check the address. I'm still running on port 3000 here, so I should just be able to refresh this again. And I'm good to go, ready to continue working on my project, previewing the changes, uh, which, like I said, in the next video, we'll pick up on this.